Hey folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak, and we are at our main store just outside Algonquin Park. Beautiful late fall day. You've just received your beautiful new Swift Kayak. This is a Kawasa 13.2 in Sunburst, Kevlar Fusion, it's got a skeg. Now it's one of our demos, so it's got some watermarks and other things on it, but let's envision it's your boat. You're gonna get tucked into the seat a copy of your sales invoice, and in the back of it, there's gonna be an owner's manual. And the owner's manual is gonna have lots of good information for you that you're gonna to wanna to read through. All of this information is also online, and we want you to go online. Go to the warranty page, and there's a green button. You can register your boat. Press the green button. You'll enter this information on it. Take a picture of your invoice, upload it also, and your boat will be registered. Now, let's spend some time talking about the beautiful features of our kayaks. Let's start at the front end of your brand new kayak. They all have these real comfort handles. You can really use these when you're tying your boat down on your vehicle. Also, you're doing two people carry, very comfortable way to lift the boat up. The Kawasas have the H channel on them, which separates the deck and the hull. Our Adirondacks and our Saranac 15 have an overlapping seam, a little different appearance. There's two types of lines on the deck of each kayak. This particular one is called the perimeter deck line, very soft and it actually has this feature on it where you shine a light on it at night. The white specks really pop up nicely. It also has bungee cords, and the bungee cords are on the boat so you can slide underneath a map, a pair of gloves, a water bottle if you like something like that on a deck. So just note that you've got the two. You've got the perimeter deck lines and you've got the bungee cords. You don't want to lift your kayak up by the bungee cords. Even the perimeter deck lines aren't really designed to really crank like crazy on them. I try to do most of my lifting on the cockpit rim and around the handles. Now let's talk about the hatches. Many of our boats have solid bulkheads and hatches on them. And all of the hatches have these straps there's a rubber gasket. It's actually a car door gasket with a channel that you just put right down on. Now, no hatch is 100% waterproof. You can get small drops of water in. These are pretty water resistant. Put everything in a plastic bag or rubber bag. If you want to make it more dry, a little bit tighter seal, what I do is I push down on the end and I crank these straps a little bit tighter on both sides. Gives a little snugger fit if I'm really going out on a longer trip. Now, as we move back on the kayak, we put a lot of padding on our seat system. So this is an ABS cockpit rim. On our overlapping seam boats, we have carbon cockpit rims. Very thick padding, we call these side pads and it does several things for you. The side pad allows you very thick padding to comfortably carry the boat where the padding's hitting my shoulder up top. And then depending on your torso height, the lower part of the cockpit rim will hit you somewhere and there's very thick padding on it. Now, when you get in the kayak, the padding comes way in, so it really gives a very good support for your thighs. The seat is one of the features of this boat that you're gonna absolutely love the most. So when you get ready to use it, you unclip it, clip into this closer one that's attached right to the seat. You pull it up and don't crank it super tight. I like to leave play in it. The reason is it allows the seat to move with you when you paddle. There's very thick padding under your bum and behind you. And this adjustable lumbar support is so important. May take you one or two paddles to find the spot where it really feels the best for you. 
but it's gonna help put you in a proper paddling position and create more of a soft surface for your body to be against as you're paddling. The foam for your thighs really creates a super comfortable position. So we've switched to show you the Adirondack 13.6, which has the carbon cockpit rim, an overlapping seam on it. And what I like this is I can really show you the foot braces nicely. So the foot braces slide back and forth right from where you're sitting, you can adjust them. So when you put them in, you can just lower it down and it locks it in place. When you wanna move it, you lift it up and you pull it to the right spot. You don't wanna pull it way away from you like this. We've had people that have broken these bars by trying to pull it like that. You just lift it up and just push it. Really works sweet. When you first get your kayak, they may be a little bit sticky. They take a little while to really work their way in. But once you get it set up, you get a real comfortable position on it. So let's go to the back of the boat. Some of our models have a paddle slot, which locks the paddle in place while you're getting in and out of the boat. We'll show you that in a bit. So again, it's got the perimeter deck line on here. And then it's also got the flexible bungee cords on it if you wanna put more gear in the back deck. Stern deck on this model. Here's an important feature. This is a stainless steel security loop. A lot of people will like to lock their boats up, either on their vehicle where they're storing it. You can run a very thick cable through here and lock it wherever you may want to. As you move towards the back of the boat, another nice handle on it. Now this boat has the serial number plate right here and the last four digits represent the month and the year that it was built. And this particular model also has a skeg system. Now the skegs are super cool, folks. Here's the control, it's right next to you. When it's forward, the skeg is retracted in the boat. When you pull it back, the skeg will come out in the back of the boat. It's a very small blade but it's really highly effective in helping the boat track straightly, especially on a windy, wavy day. Now, if you're ever finding that it's hard to move this right here, don't try to crank it like crazy. It may mean that there's some grass or sand or whatever that's caught in the skeg system. Just leave it the way it is, get out of the boat. And what I like to do so I like to get a long, thin knife and some water pressure, put water in, and just carve out anything that may be in there. Maybe some grass, maybe some sand, whatever. Now, normally when you're paddling, if you're paddling somewhere and you run over a rock or a log, the skeg will go in, just like that. So they are very versatile. No skeg system on the market is 100% flawless. Things can happen to them through use and wear. Remember, whenever you're coming into the shore, always move the skeg in the forward position so it's retracted back in the boat. So we've come to the shore, we're getting out of the boat. What I always do is I fold the seat down right away. If you're driving with the boat where you're storing it, it's always best to have the lumbar support on and the seat folded down in this particular position. To store them, what I ultimately like the best is to have the kayak stored upside down like this on a set of horses or on a two by four rack. And what we do in our two by four racks is we put foam blocks underneath them to give them some nice soft padding. They are very lightweight. If you're storing it outside in a place where you can have a lot of wind, you wanna tie it down when you do it. Now there's lots of new support racks for people to store a boat in a house or a garage. I have a friend who has her boat stored in her living room. She loves it so much. And she has the side sling racks and Suspense makes some, Talic makes some. A lot of people will custom make their own. If you're going to do that, try to have the supports 
near where bulkheads or some other support structure the boat is on. The, right around the bow hatch, right behind it, is a good place in the front. On about right where the stern bulkhead is right here, or anywhere back in this area works pretty well also. What you don't want to do is store your kayak on some type of sling support racks like that and have a whole bunch of extra weight in the boat. Just have it be the boat itself. They're very light. There won't be too much pressure over time. Absolutely beautiful boat, and you're gonna to wanna to take good care of it. One of the things that we do with all of our boats is we put, in essence, suntan lotion on the boats. We use Protectant 303, which we have on our web store. And what this does is it leaves a small film which provides UV protection for the gel coat finishes in the laminate itself. So when you put the Protectant 303 on and wipe it in, and I'm literally just leaving a film here, look how it cleans the boat also. What we do a lot in the winter, if you're leaving your boat outside all winter, just put a small piece of a painter's tape over here so the water, snow, ice can't get down into your skeg system over the winter. Nice little tidbit of information. So this stuff works great. You don't want to ingest it. Just spray it on your boat end to end. So you do it on the hull. You do it on the H channel. You do it on the deck of the boat as well. Just one end to the other, provide a real good film. It can go right over the stickers. You can put it on the cockpit rim. And it really does help with the longevity of your boat. If you're able to store your boat inside, that's the best. If you do do it outside, put it upside down as I've showed you. Two by four racks, some foam blocks works great. Let's go have some fun, Ox Tongue Lake. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to get in from a dock. You can also do this very similar technique by putting your kayak sideways on the shore. Always start by putting your seat up. So again, don't crank the heck out of this. Just get it nice and snug. I'm gonna slide the boat in the water and then I'm gonna use the kayak paddle. So this is so nice right here to have the slot in the back of the boat and it just really keeps the paddle in place. So I've got pretty big feet. I'm gonna slowly take my time. I'm putting a lot of weight right on the paddle right here. I don't wanna lean away from me or I could roll the boat over right over that way. I try to keep my weight leaning in. Put one leg in, then the other. And I'm gonna scooch my bum in. Now, rather than pushing off from shore right away, I'm going to get my feet adjusted to the optimum position right away. I'm bracing my thighs up on the inside of the boat. We do have some people that put their legs down just flat, their knees right flat on the floor. It's so much more of a comfortable position, folks, if you bend your knees. And don't push like crazy on your feet. You want them snug. You want to be able to move your toes around a little bit. Try different positions. You can even do it just on your lawn where you're sitting before you take the boat to the water. Get a really good spot for the foot brace. Once your feet are real comfortable, you're, you've got your body in a comfortable position, what I'd like to do is to roll the boat a little bit. Just find out how much reserve, how much final stability I have. And then a really good thing to do right when you first start out is not to take forward strokes and to move all around. Really try to move the boat sideways. Get used to controlling the boat. I'm doing a sculling stroke here. 
where I'm putting the upstream edge up a little bit, allows me to slide the boat across the water nicely. So then I'm gonna do the same here, just going back. Now note how I'm keeping my upper arm up high. If I put my upper arm down low, I don't have nearly as much force moving the boat. I can do so much more with my arm, upper arm in a higher position, trying to get the blade in a better angle in the water. So you've just had a great paddle. Come back, want to get out of the boat. So the best way is just the opposite way of how you got in. Put the paddle right behind you and find a nice comfortable spot. Really push down on your upper body and slide one butt cheek out first, then get both butt cheeks out. So all these swift kayaks are beautiful. We're gonna be doing some videos on proper paddling techniques. You're gonna to learn to get to know how to control the direction of your boat by doing lean turns and so on. It's a beautiful craft boat. Enjoy it, have some fun with it. Cheers.